Okay, in this video, we're continuing our discussion of AUC Section 315, um, gaining an understanding of the entity and um, assessing the risk of material misstatement. So the last couple of videos, we have been discussing um, how we go about um, gaining an understanding of the client's internal controls. Um, as we saw in the prior video, we have a responsibility to uh, gain an understanding of the design and the implementation of the internal controls. With that being, um, gain an understanding of how they have been set up to work and also whether or not um, they're working that way. Um, and just to say that we don't necessarily have to determine whether those controls are actually effective or not. In order for us to determine that, we would have to test the internal controls, and uh, that's not um, relevant to what we're trying to do for this AUC section. So anyway, um, the standard setup um, for us, components of internal control, and uh, they have five components of it. Um, they have the control environment, um, the entity's risk assessment process, the information system, control activities, and monitoring of controls. So each of these is a detailed part of understanding the components of internal controls. So we will kind of take each of them in turn in these videos. So the first one would be the control environment. So it says that we should obtain understanding of the control environment. And as part of gaining that understanding, we will evaluate whether management with the oversight of those charts governance has created and maintained a culture of honesty and ethical behavior. Uh, we will also evaluate whether the strengths in the control environment elements collectively provide an appropriate foundation for other components of internal control and whether those components are not undetermined or undermined by deficiencies in the control environment. So um, basically, our management and uh, governance setting up a, a structure that uh, creates a good culture and also do all of these um, components work well together to perhaps prevent or um, alert us to misstatements when they do occur. So we've got some explanatory material down here in A79 through A89 related to the control environment. So let's go down there and see what uh, they have to say. Okay, so now we're in section A79 um, and it's telling us about the control environment. So first it tells us that uh, the control environment includes governance and management functions, their attitudes, awareness, and actions. Um, and that it's basically um, what we typically call the tone at the top. So uh, what is the culture of the organization and does it provide a foundation for all the other components um, and provides discipline and structure? So we would look to see um, that management and governance are ethical and they, they really care about um, the organization and put forth policies to make sure that the organization achieves its objectives. So they've provided us here um, several elements that we might consider when we're gaining an understanding of their control environment. So we would look at uh, the communication enforcement of integrity and ethical values, their commitment to competence, their participation by those charged with governance, uh, management's philosophy and operating style, their organizational structure, assignment of authority and responsibility, and human resource policies and practices. We can all think of um, possibly things that uh, management or governance might set up that would promote these things. For example, maybe there's a, a monthly meeting with the staff to promote communication um, or maybe a, a tip hotline for any um, wrongdoings at the company. Uh, perhaps they um, set up um, particular learning schemes or um, ways for staff to um, gain education and do their job well. Maybe they have a particular organizational structure that uh, makes things um, very planned and uh, makes sure things are ex executed and, and reviewed along the way. Um, perhaps human resource policies set up things where um, maybe ethical and moral and um, good, educated, competent people are hired. So essentially, when we're um, gaining an understanding of the control environment, we look to each of these things to see are, are they present and, and promoted within the organization. So we might, uh, the type of evidence that we might get in order to verify the implementation of this and also the design of it uh, might be um, inquiries. So we might talk to management or governance how each of these things is um, accomplished in their organization. Uh, we might get, um, we might observe or inspect document. If perhaps while we're, if we're in their office and we can observe um, the um, staff meeting or, or board meeting um, or uh, perhaps we um, inspect the employee handbook and, and see, or on their website, perhaps there's a, a mission statement or perhaps employees are required to sign um, a, a quality uh, policies or a page in the handbook that says they will follow the policy. And perhaps maybe there's a code of conduct that we can get a copy of. So um, that would tell us whether they, all of this has been uh, implemented. And so then once we have an understanding of that control environment, we have to relate it um, to um, our assessment of the risk of material misstatement. For instance, if, if there's not a good control environment, um, of course, it's more likely that there would be uh, misstatements in the financial statements. And what's uh, really um, important about this is that um, any uh, downfalls in the control environment are pervasive across the entire financial statement. So it's not just that maybe one particular account balance or transaction class would be misstated. Um, it's, if the control environment is bad, then the entire financial statements might be um, misstated. So this is a, a very big, important um, thing for us to work through. And so one of the biggies that they discuss here is that of um, the role of governance in the organization. So uh, whether governance is independent from management, um, then are they more likely to evaluate the actions of management uh, without bias? Um, and also whether they understand the entity's business transactions or the extent to which they evaluate whether financial statements are prepared in accordance with the financial reporting framework. So we would hope that the board or those charged with governance are knowledgeable enough um, and ethical enough to be able to support these 
bullet points. And if they're not, maybe we would have to come to terms with um, the possibility that uh, the financial statements might not be, uh, or they might be materially misstated if uh, governance is not particularly independent or knowledgeable about the organization or of financial reporting standards. And we've seen that the, the board is certainly important for um, implementing the philosophy and operating style of senior management. But as we discussed before, um, it's also important that human resources um, sets up policies and practices that uh, make sure the right people are in the right seat. And so the existence of a satisfactory control environment is certainly a positive factor when we're assessing the risk of material misstatement. However, it doesn't um, give us the ability to um, let down our guard. Um, so although it is a, um, a deterrent to a fraud, um, a satisfactory control environment is not an absolute deterrent to fraud. And so the control environment itself does not prevent or detect and correct a material misstatement. It does, however, influence um, our evaluation of the effectiveness of other control or control components, for instance, the monitoring of controls and the operation of specific control activities. Um, and therefore, we might can reduce our risk of material misstatement. So um, what they're saying there is that uh, if our overall control environment is good, um, perhaps that means it's more likely that uh, the monitoring controls are um, operating effectively or the specific control activities are operating effectively. But uh, in and of itself, a good control environment does not necessarily mean that everything is operating um, correctly.